I'm on the shock absorber neglect warpath today, so you have to kind of pardon my rant. But I feel that shock absorbers are one of the most neglected maintenance and safety items on these older Mercedes Benzes. I can't believe how many of these cars, even cars that have been maintained at the dealerships, have bad shocks on them. So in this video, I hope to prove my point. I have a 1994 E320 Mercedes-Benz Coupe here in my shop. And I'm currently in the process of replacing the shock absorbers on it. Now you're going to say, well, Kent, how do you know when to replace the shock absorbers? How many miles do you expect to get out of shock absorbers? Well, we're going to cover that in a few minutes. But right away, I knew from driving the car. Of course, I've had a lot of experience driving these cars, so it only took me about two blocks and I knew the car needed new shock absorbers. Now you can do the, the bounce test, but unless you have experience in doing bounce tests on cars with both good and bad shocks, you may not be able to tell the difference, particularly with Bilstein shocks, which is the only shock absorber I use. So you come back here and you bounce up and down, on, you know, like this, you say, well, it doesn't feel too bad. You know, it comes up and kind of stops. Well, I think those shocks are okay. <laughs> but how do you know? Now this car has 115,000 miles on it, has been garaged all its life, has been freeway driven, only two owners. So you would expect that sh the shocks should still be good if they're Bilstein's, right? Now you've probably heard that some people go, oh, I go 200,000 miles, I go 150,000 miles, no problems with my shocks. I sometimes wonder how those particular people know there's no problems with their shocks. And how do they know their shocks are still good? Because <laughs> I'm going to show you here in a minute a good example between what a new shock should look like, feel like, and what a used or worn shock looks like, feels like, as we test it side by side. And then I'm going to show you a totally worn out front shock compared to a new shock. So you're going to get to see some subtle differences because I think what happens is that people drive these cars and they just get used to it gradually declining in ride and handling and they don't notice it. But I just recently acquired a really nice Mercedes-Benz from the 80s with 100,000 miles on it, enthusiast owned, and you can't believe how much maintenance he had done on this car. I mean, he was a real enthusiast. But I drove the car and after two blocks, I looked at him and said, hey, there's something wrong with your rear shocks. And he says, what do you mean? I've been driving this car for years. There's nothing wrong with my shocks. Well, once again, that's an example. And I think this is the case with most owners that have owned these cars a number of years. They just get used to driving them and it gradually and gradually declines. Okay, so I'm going to now show you a few things specific to this car about the shock absorbers. And I'm gonna do some comparisons so you can see these subtle differences. We're gonna see a subtle difference and then you're gonna see a major difference. For this comparison, I have a set of brand new shocks front and rear and I have some used shocks. Now, yesterday I replaced the shocks on the driver's side because I wanted to be able to show this comparison in this video. So I've got Bilstein Comforts, and that was what originally was on the car. So we're comparing apples to apples, except we're comparing new to old, okay? I also have the upper front shock mounts, which I think you'll find interesting as I get into this video and show you the comparison between the old one, which really looks just fine, and a new one right here. So I'm going to start out with the rear shock, kind of show you what the original looked like, and then we'll compare it with the new rear shock. But I want to do the bounce test on the front. And this is going to prove a point about these bounce tests. But look at the front here. <laughs> I mean, the other side is, is okay, but look at how much roll I'm getting in that. So the bounce test does work when the shock is really bad. If they're really shot, I think the car will be up and down and actually rolling. And that's a really good indication that something's wrong with your shock absorbers. So let me show you this used rear one. It actually feels pretty good on the ground. Here's a left rear shock that I removed yesterday. Let's do a push down test here and see how this responds. Now you're going all the way down and then you're releasing it. It should come up. And I'm as I push down on it, I'm looking for any flat spots. This one feels pretty good. Look at that. If I actually get into it a little bit up and down, it's not feeling too bad at all. And you'd say, well, 
there's a little bit of dampness there, but that doesn't necessarily mean the shock is bad. And I think if you tested this with no comparison, you'd probably say, hey, I can use these shocks, they're fine, okay? Let's bring it up alongside the new rear one and do the same test side by side. Now, I know it's hard to tell in this video, but, you know, I'm having to push a little... <laughs> have to push a little bit harder on the left side where you get them all the way down okay come on come on all right now I'm gonna release both look at how much faster the new shot came up so you see the subtle difference just a subtle difference between this new one and old one that will really affect the ride and handling of your car so just looking at shocks and feeling shocks doesn't necessarily mean they're okay now let's look at the front one. This is gonna be a surprise. <laughs> Here's the left front, watch this. Nothing. I mean, I shouldn't, these are really heavy duty strut style shocks and I should have to really push, but watch. I'm just going to push down like this. I don't even have to hardly push at all and it's coming back. So there's no leaks here. So if you go by the leak check as the rule whether or not you replace your shocks, this one would pass. But, but it's really bad, folks, even though it's coming back up. Now I'm going to bring the front new one in here. <laughs> and this is, this is going to wear me out. Sorry, okay? Now, I think I'll just put this one down and try this one with two hands. <laughs> okay? Let's see if I can push it down with one hand. Oh man, look at this. This one I don't even have to work at. Come on. <laughs> okay. Now we'll release them. Oh, sorry. Okay. Man, this is tough. Uh, and this one actually comes up a little bit slower than the worn out chalk on this side. So there's a really good example. Once again, if you were to look at this shock, okay, no leaks, no wetness, no seal leak there, nice clean shaft, and you pushed up and down on it, you might think it's okay. <laughs> but it's, it's shot, folks. Now let me show you those front mounts and the subtle difference between those when they start to wear out. Let me begin by taking a closer look at the used one that we removed from the left side yesterday. This is the top. And if you look at the top, you see no deterioration here, no cracking. And a lot of times people say, well, if you see a lot of cracking, that's when you should replace these. Now, if you turn it over on the back side, it doesn't look too bad either. But you start looking down in the crack here on the back side where the rubber is, and you start seeing some what I call collapsing marks there, and there's a little, just very minor cracking. So you could look at this, and you could say, this is fine, I'm just gonna leave that on there and replace the front shocks. But once again, anytime you're doing this with rubber parts, consider the age. If they're over about 18 years old, you better think again about just doing a visual inspection and that calling it good, okay? So what I'm going to do now is give you a stiffness test. Now this is tough because I'm doing it by hand, so it's not real scientific, but I think it'll give you a, an idea of what I mean by gradual deterioration of rubber parts like this. This includes suspension parts, motor mounts, things like that. All right, I'm gonna take my fingers right here on this edge because the movement is like this. When the shock is moving, that's the way this mount will move but it's supposed to be real stiff. It's not supposed to move around a lot. If it does, then your front end is gonna move around a lot during heavy cornering or heavy braking. So if I take this and squeeze it together, I think you can see in the video, now I'm not that strong, but I think you can see it is moving, it is squeezing. Now let's put this aside over here. Here's the new one. Let's flip it over and <laughs> I know what some of you are thinking, oh, Kent, you're just cheating. You're not squeezing as hard. Well, I can't even move this thing. I mean, I'm serious. I can't even move it. So these mounts need to be super stiff, not, not weak and spongy. It's not like a motor mount where it's designed to move around and absorb vibration. 
So I highly recommend on these older Mercedes, a number of chassis use these top mounts like this in the 80s and 90s. I highly recommend that you just order these. They're not that expensive, but replace this part right here when you replace your front shocks or your front struts. I'm still kind of panting from working this front strut. Let me tell you, they are stiff when they are new. Now, I did mention at the beginning of this video something about neglecting safety if you neglected your shocks. I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, I thought shocks are primarily, you know, handling and ride control. Not necessarily so, and let me explain. For instance, these front shocks are so bad, I wish I would have filmed the video uh, on this before I brought it into the shop because I went out and did a heavy braking test on this car and you can't believe the amount of nosedive that I was getting. And that's another indication that the fronts are really bad. When you get excessive nosedive, we're talking real heavy braking, okay? And what happens, and I've read some statistics on this, that if you get heavy nosedive during braking, that reduces the effectiveness of the rear brakes to a point where your stopping distance could increase. In fact, numbers show that maybe, let's say, 70 miles an hour, you see a pile up up ahead and you do heavy panic braking with bad shocks. You could increase the stopping distance, let's say, 20 to 40 feet with bad shock absorbers. Now, that could be the difference between you either hitting or not hitting the car in front of you on one of those classic freeway pileup. So it is a safety issue when you're talking about braking. It's also a safety issue when you're talking about just handling the car in a panic, heavy braking swerve situation. You know, if your shocks are so bad, you could get a lot of body roll and actually lose control of the car. So when you're thinking shocks, don't just think ride and comfort. Now I've got the new ones here that are going to go on the right side later today, but I thought I would do something before I replace the shocks and take this out on the road. I've never done this, so it's gonna be kind of an interesting experiment for me too, but I wanna see if I can demonstrate driving the car. We're gonna do a little braking, a little swerving, and see if I can demonstrate the difference between the left side and the right side in terms of handling and performance when I still have bad shocks on this side right here. We, we get that done, we'll come back in the shop and start replacing the shocks and I'll show you a few tips about doing that as well.